Hi everyone, this is Luxtos. Tour guest Tower of the Damned just hit alpha server today and it looks promising. <laughs> what am I saying? It looks amazing. All right, so let me be straight with you guys. I wasn't expecting much out of this. This is early alpha stage. This is a new game feature, something we've never seen before, at least not of this scale. And I was so scared. I was so scared that it wasn't going to be what they promised it to be. Because, you know, Island Expedition. Um, so, I honestly just, just, I was waiting for it, but I was a little bit skeptical. I was a little bit scared. I wasn't expecting anything out of this. And, um, oh God, it's good. So I know it's still early stage right now, and I should probably not get too excited about this, but even if we've seen a lot or almost none of it, right now what I've played today feels really, really good. I've had a blast on stream today playing this and going through it on multiple classes, and I just had a smile on my face the entire time. Let me tell you, this is the most fun I've had playing World of Warcraft in a long time. Like. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy doing my Mythic Plus, I enjoy doing my Raid, I enjoy doing PvP, I enjoy all of those things that I've been doing for a while now, but this felt new, refreshing, crazy. It, it, it doesn't hit anything else that we've already done in World of Warcraft because it goes over boundaries that we've barely crossed before. We're going into powers and buffs and to abilities and into things that... We've never thought Blizzard would introduce, and they're creating exactly this scenario, this arena, this, this piece of content that they're able to explore ideas and do crazy thing while letting you have fun and while rewarding you for it. And that's what's crazy about it, because I played this thing without any reward today on Alpha. Everything was placeholder, everything was just, it, it didn't, nothing mattered. And I just couldn't bring myself to stop. I was looking constantly at the clock at the time at which I usually stop my stream. And I was like, God, I got to stop playing this soon. I got to go do things. And I could see myself playing this for hours and hours on end. And this is a giant introduction right now. This is a big introduction to something so, um, so small and still so early into the alpha stage. But... Let me tell you, right now, it seems to be worth it. It's 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 worth every second of excitement over this thing, and I'm really genuinely happy to be making this video right now because I wanted to share this with you guys. You know, I really, really wanted to share with you guys all of this joy that I've had today playing this game, playing this new feature, and I want us to talk more about it. All right, so currently on Alpha, it's pretty straightforward. You talk to an NPC, and you get teleported in, you zone in, um, that's pretty much it. There's no currency, no key, nothing required to get in, but that's more than likely to be a thing in the future. So probably in beta or even maybe when the actual feature hit uh, uh, the live server when the expansion is released. So we'll probably get more information on that a little bit later on. But right now, it's pretty straightforward. We zone in. We're able to access this currently with four classes. Hopefully more are going to come soon. But we have the Demon Hunter, Warlock, Mage, and priest the reason we only have access to those limited class is because currently it's a work in progress and every time you go in it's a customized unique experience for your class so every possible anima powers um, are customized for your class so there's going to be a bunch that you're going to be able to get as a demon hunter and they're going to be different for warlock and for mage and for priest so currently they're working on these they're doing iteration on those powers and we're probably going to learn more about them in the future but we already know a bunch of them for those classes there's even uh some generic one that everybody's able to get there's some class one obviously and then there's some covenant ability modifiers with those anima powers so we're going to talk a lot more about that we're going to describe how everything works but i just wanted to set things up set the stage up for what are we doing right now in alpha why does it look like this and why are you only seeing those classes currently so right now in alpha we have this orb waiting for us inside uh once you click on it you're able to use it as a menu in order to select what you want to do uh, i don't think this orb is going to allow you to select much uh, in the future i think it's only going to be a way for you to start the uh the tower 
So, but right now what we're doing on the alpha is that we're able to choose between two quests. So I'm assuming those are going to probably be some training quest, maybe some lore built into it. Like, why are we there and all of that good stuff? So those are probably going to be introduction quests to the tower. We'll see how many of these there are currently on alpha. There is two that you can complete and there is the twisting corridor. So that seems to be the main uh, randomized, repeatable, farmable feature of the tower. So right now you can see easy, normal and heroic. Uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, some difficulty modifier. It simply teleports you at higher floor level in order to bypass uh, some of the lower difficulty if you want to experience higher floors uh, for uh, testing purposes. But from what I understand, when the server goes live, when the expansion hit, uh, you're going to be able to do some quests in there and then you're going to simply be able to uh, zone in into one of those twisting corridors that they call and you're just going to progress uh, from floor zero. Maybe there's going to be some uh, skip available. Maybe if you get to a certain level and you're able to skip some of the easy floor because you don't need them anymore. We'll see how that all works, but that's currently what we have uh, access to right now on Alpha. So while you're in this area, you're able to set up your character as you want. You can change your talent freely, equip the gear that you need and get ready to go for the experience ahead. And the best about this is that once you start your adventure in the tower, you are currently able to use a tome. That means you can change your talents on the go, depending on which anima powers you're getting and try to start making those weird fun build, which I think is a really, really good feature at the moment of this system and that it, it, it feels freeing, empowering, and it lets you have fun. It lets you be creative with whatever uh, piece of the puzzle you're getting. And then you have to adapt to it, change talent and figure out what is going to best way to defeat the challenge ahead. As you climb up the stairs, you'll see this big giant red ball of anima which will give you access to your first choice, the first power you're going to select. But don't worry, you'll see plenty more of these. These seems to be all over the place when you defeat a boss, when you defeat a rare, sometimes when you destroy objects. Yes, you heard me right. When you destroy objects, a little bit like Diablo, uh, you're going to be running around and there's going to be a bunch of vase and object that are going to be destructible. You can either s uh, target them, use a spell on them, use AOE or even right click them. So you have plenty of choice on how to destroy those objects and Sometimes you're going to be rewarded with one of those anima power choice, and it feels pretty great to discover those. There's plenty of things. There's plenty of little puzzle piece and things to explore that are going to spawn as many of those. So that's kind of your goal to try to power creep your way through the floor. Because ultimately, that's your goal. You're going to want to try to climb as high as possible to claim uh, as much reward as possible and the best reward possible. As you explore and you climb up these floors, things are going to get increasingly difficult. So every new floor, mobs have more HP, do more damage, and they get more scary. But you can take your time. So this is the core feature for me. The core selling point of this is you don't have a limited amount of time. Once you get in there, you could literally go AFK for a while, go make a sandwich if you want to, and you're not going to get kicked out. So this is not something that you have to hurry to do. This is something that Blizzard want you to take your time if you want to explore and have fun. Obviously, if you just want to rush to the end, try to go as fast as possible, just get the minimum power you need to climb through and, and, and keep climbing, you can do so. Nothing prevents you from doing that, but also nothing prevents you from taking your time. Nothing is forcing you to go faster and have that constant and pressure. As you climb the tower, uh, you, you, you're just going to explore every floor. You're going to be able to get chests, uh, avoid traps, uh, defeat enemies and collect all of those power to get ready for the level ahead. So what's going to be the limiter here? So obviously they're not going to let you brute force your way up to the tower by just dying over and over and kiting everything up to the end and getting a reward, right? That 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 wouldn't feel good. So what they're doing here is they're giving you three death per floor. So pretty much three lives that you have three chance at clearing the level. Think about every floor as a brand new little level inside of this inside of this adventure. And you have three chance. 
So pretty much you can go through, try to understand where everything is, see if there's anything that's dangerous to you, um, try out some encounters and explore. And whenever something's going to be maybe too difficult to you uh, and, and you're, you're going to die where well, you're going to lose one of those lives. As soon as you hit three, this is where the fun starts. So let me show you here what happens when you die three times in a row on the same floor. You get a nice friendly little timer that will tell you that Tiriguru is coming. Okay, so I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but the game is going to tell you, okay, it's time to go. Okay, it's time to leave because bad things are going to happen to you. Okay, and if you don't listen to this timer, well, uh, this happens. So he spawns right onto the spawn location and has an insanely high aggro range. And he's just going to start chasing you down every time he sees you. And if he kills you, then you just start over on the spawn point and die and die and die again you can let him patrol you can let him leave and he's just going to go explore the rest of the floor but as you come back and he senses you because like i said his aggro range is pretty big he's just going to look at you chase you down and kill you again you're able to slow him and you're able to stun him but that's not going to be enough unless you're able to reach the next floor, which currently right now, I don't even know if that's going to save you. I don't know if it currently resets the amount of death and if it gives you uh, a new chance to start over fresh on a brand new floor. But right now, if this guy is over there, uh, good luck getting through. OK, you got to walk pretty fast. Maybe some classes are going to be able to escape him uh, maybe uh, better than others. But right now, this guy is the limiter okay this guy is uh he is the bodyguard of the tower and he is going to kick your ass so you don't want him uh, but i think this is a very cool and creative way of letting you know you're not where you're supposed to be so clearly you got to a floor that's a little bit too difficult for you and you need to go all right all right, Lux, so this looks pretty fun, but um, am I getting loot out of this? What, what, what am I getting? What's my reward for climbing the tower? Well, that's a really good question. Currently, right now on the alpha, we are getting some PH items of some placeholder item. Uh, some of them are listed as boss loot, so that's pretty neat. That means we're going to be able to get some item. Um... That would be kind of nice if the higher you go into the floor, the higher the item level or something like that. So we don't know yet what those are going to be. And you're going to find some chests that are going to be just randomly spawning on some floors next to boss, next to some some puzzles or some stuff. There's going to be some chests laying around. And when you open them right now, it says legendary component. So I, I probably assume those are going to be the component that you're going to need in order to craft your legendaries. There is currently two currencies that you can get while in the tower. There is Phantasma that's found on the bodies of the monster and creature you're going to kill in there, accompanied with a couple gold. And there is also something called Freed Souls. So let's first talk about Phantasma. So this is going to be a currency that's going to remain with you in the tower. So as soon as you leave the tower, all Phantasma will be destroyed and deleted from your currency. So that's something that you can collect while in the tower in order to gain access to some power. You're going to encounter some randomly placed vendor that are going to allow you to spend that currency. So pretty much these guys are going to sell you potion, buffs, even anima power that you're going to directly buy from them and it's going to apply to you. And then there's even some of those orb that you can buy, place on the ground, click them and collect a randomly generated anima power. So right now, there doesn't seem to be anything else you can do with this currency. Um, this is going to be simply one of those things where it's going to reward you for taking your time, clearing every level, killing every mob and looting all of them so that when you encounter this vendor, you're going to be able to buy some extra power to climb some more level. So that's a pretty cool design. And I think that's that's a really, really neat idea. And this next one is called Freed Soul. So those are simply random soul laying around on the floor or in cage that you have to free. And they pretty much stay with you in your currency tab when you leave the tower. So those seems to be related with your covenant. So probably they're going to be a way to progress your soul binds and all of those talent tree that we're going to get with our covenant. So we're going to get probably more information about that in the coming days. 
All right, so this one caught me by surprise because, you know, in, in every good dungeon crawler, there's going to be traps, right? So there's going to be huge spikes on the ground and alternating pattern. And you're just going to look at the pattern, you know, dodge them, go through them. Super easy. Not a big deal. Uh, but I'm ashamed to say I did get hit by one of their trap and it actually did a good chunk of damage. And I'm pretty sure if the bleed was working, I would have died. So that's a pretty neat little feature. You know, it's funny. It's it's an old cheesy trap that we've seen thousands of time. But, you know, there's multiple of these and some of them are easy to avoid. Some of them, you don't see them. They're completely hidden. So uh, I think it's pretty nice. It adds a little bit of depth to it and it makes you tank your time. And it's not just about going as fast as possible, killing as many mobs as possible. You know, you actually have to look around and it, it has this this little feeling of Dare what I say, you know, Zelda games, uh, Binding of Isaacs, you know, that, that dungeon aspect that you love just entering a new room, trying to figure out what's going to happen. You're actually on the back foot. Every time I would go into a room, I was like, okay, so what's the trap here? What's gonna happen? And even sometimes there, nothing would happen, just a bunch of mobs and they were just in their weird pattern and I was getting skeptical about everything. So the whole thing really had me... Um, really you know on the edge of my seat and i was just waiting like what's going to happen next and um I, for a second there i i forgot i was in an mmo i was actually just playing a mini game and i was just enjoying the heck out of it i wasn't even thinking about what's the reward what am i gonna get i was just trying to solve this little puzzle just to see what was coming up next and i think that's where this new feature hits the note really really well i think that's why it is so well done you kind of forget a little bit about it and you just let yourself go and you let yourself have fun again and you know what's crazy is that we're not even done but i mean it's, there's just too many feature for a single video we haven't even talked about bonus objective you can find npcs that are going to give you quests in order to escort them to their friend for special rewards there is spectral chests and puzzles with levers and stuff and it's just it doesn't end and to me for a first early alpha stage of this feature i mean I know I've said this a lot, and I know this video is getting pretty long, but it's, it's pretty impressive. All right, so I've been rambling for way too long. I've actually already cut half of this video because I was just talking about a lot of stuff and getting excited about this. And I was I realized that I haven't even showed you any of the cool stuff yet. I, I just talked about feature and stuff, but at its core, the reason I think this is going to succeed is because of the raw amount of fun you're going to have. Because yes, the systems are solid, but I think what's really, really fun in this is the amount of creative build you can do and just how much fun they are. So I pretty much stood there giggling for like a minute straight when I realized I could spam I-beam over and over and over again for over like... 60 seconds of pure fun on this guy so it's the exact same feeling you get when you realize you can use that old legendaries into a, a time walking dungeon and then you're able to just decimate the whole thing but then you're actually doing it in a piece of content that's relevant and that's actually giving you good rewards so this is the result of stacking fleet wing force wing Fury Wing and Frenzy Wing not only does it sound great but it actually looks pretty good so not only do you reduce the cooldown of Fell Rush to one second, but you also increase its damage by 400%, increase its range by 100%, and move 100% faster for the next five seconds after using it. So let me tell you, I was, I was laughing the whole way through. I was almost getting nauseous. This was absolutely crazy. Uh, and I was having so much fun. It was, it was just surreal right there. And I just wanted to show you guys this piece of footage because I do like it pretty much. All right. Oh, boy. You made it through. This this video was pretty long. I've been rambling the entire time. But you know what? I just, I just had to get it out there. I just had to talk about it. I was so excited about this feature. I couldn't wait to make this video. And now, you know what? It's done. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.
We have so much more content coming up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button because coming up next, we have quick class overview. So I played it through the dungeon with every specialization in the game, and I'm going to give you the pros, the cons, and how does it feel currently in Shadowlands Alpha. So stay tuned for that. And obviously, I'm going to be redoing every single class we course going into Shadowland. So stay tuned for that. But until then, guys, I will see you next time.